I am very nervous about filming this video. Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, or hello if you're new, I'm Anna Mae, and today I'm gonna to be talking about what they don't tell you about going on the one year graduate visa. If you're completely new to my channel, I'm Anna Mae. I'm currently working on my master's in peace and development studies, and before this, I was in the US for six months on the one year graduate visa, and I interned at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. So that's kind of where this comes from. My bachelor's was in politics and information and social computing. I went to UCD and then I was working at home here, saving before I went to the US to do this visa. So if you're also not super familiar with the one year graduate visa, it's a J1 visa, but is valid for a year under very specific circumstances and that's what I'm going to be kind of touching on in this video. Uh, I'm not going to go super super into depth with the weird parts of your actual contract and the visa itself and your visa sponsor is actually what it comes from which again is another factor in this whole thing. I do want to say that I had a great experience when I was in the US. I loved my internship. Um, I would have stayed if the circumstances were different but the thing is they're not and sometimes you just have to cut your losses and move on and that's what I decided to do. That's why I'm doing my master's now because I was still so young and it was kind of the advice of a lot of people I met uh, in my discipline that I get even more education before I start because I was quite young. So yeah, this is kind of a difficult one to talk about because it's kind of like discussing your failures and I think that's why I'm kind of nervous to talk about it. Um, I will be also doing a video which you will really be going more into the whole like failure part of it which would be just my whole grad visa story, why I decided to go, what happened when before I went, when I was there, why I decided to come back early. Um, some of that will kind of be a part of this video but I should also clarify uh, all these opinions are my own. I'm not trying to shoot down any of the companies or organizations that I mention because I am going to mention them. I worked with Use It to purchase my visa and do that whole process and their partner is CIEE. Um, specifically my issues are with CIEE because everything just gets passed on to them seemingly in the US and that's where a lot of my problems actually came from. I also want to say that I know there's lots of people who will just point out this is also what's making me nervous. Uh, everything that I did wrong. I, I know I'm making this video so that other people don't make the same mistakes that I did uh, because I don't feel like I had much guidance going into it. And I understand that some people have a phenomenal experience and it's just so great and it's a wonderful time and they end up staying and they get great jobs and they get great internships and everything like that. So all of that said, I have a blog post already written on this which I will be using to talk through this video. I'm going to be referencing it here. I'll have it linked down below if you want to check that out, but let's get into it. The biggest takeaway that I have from this whole experience is that this visa is really suited to certain degree types and that degree type is not mine. Uh, that industry is not mine. I think if you're in business, uh, finance, marketing, advertising, PR, even like if you're going into entertainment. This is probably a really good thing for you to do but in other industries I think it can be more difficult. Obviously my background's in politics and international affairs, that's what I'm interested in. When I was originally going I was looking at political PR uh, which has some things but everything is a lot more complicated than it seems obviously everything is. Problem number one is that you will not qualify for a lot of internships. A huge issue I found was, so with this visa, if you are aware, if you're considering going on it, you've probably seen, you cannot accept regular employment. It must be categorized as an internship. And a lot of things with internships are not paid, A, eh? which is something, you know, you might choose to do. Uh, I had to choose to do it, but I would say definitely many, but probably most internships are only for people who are currently enrolled in a college program because of how labor laws work in different places that you cannot be working for no money you must be getting something in return and that should be an educational benefit and that would be awarding credits for a class but if that's not available then it's they have to provide something else and it's confusing. That was not the case in my internship because it was the UN, but that will be something else. Uh, I also wanna say the UN was like not a problem in this whole situation. They were very accommodating for me. I think the issues lie with the whole 
visa and sponsor and things like that. Not with my actual internship. Also, the internships oftentimes are part-time and there are a certain amount of hours. Now I have heard anecdotally that people will ask their employer, their internship provider to sign off saying that they're doing, I think it's like 32 hours. I have it written somewhere here. It's somewhere in the blog post, but uh, you need to have a certain amount of hours per week for it to be approved by CIEE. And if you're not, then it's not. So most of the internships were part-time, but yes, anecdotally I've heard of people getting part-time internships, having it signed off as a full-time internship and then working like illegally or whatever on the side, um, which is, sounds great. That will be a really great situation, uh, but it was not the situation I was finding myself in because when you're kind of in the political arena, people definitely try and stay within the law for things like that. So uh, it, I think it can kind of be a bit more strict and they just don't want to they just don't want to be involved. They just don't want to be involved. That is a big part of it, I found. So as well as like the time restraint you have and the not currently being enrolled in college issue you have, a lot of places won't actually accept people on J1 visas. They won't accept, well, at least for something like politics, they won't accept people on visas in general, but definitely not J1 visas. A lot of people ask me for like, UN advice and stuff like that. The UN does not accept people on J1 visas anymore. It was just kind of too late. They had already signed some of my contracts and I had signed contracts before someone further up the line was like, oh, we don't accept that anymore. But they made an exception for me because it was already so far gone, but they do not accept J1s anymore. It says that specifically. So um, J1s are very, I wouldn't say they're particularly well liked is what the impression I got was. Um, but yeah, a lot of really big companies that have internship programs do not allow J1 visas. Problem two was what I titled, oh, you're offering me an internship? Here's a bunch of forms to fill out. Before you can officially accept and start an internship, it has to be approved by CIEE. And spoiler alert, that's not something that I did. Uh, my internship was approved by CIEE, but I started it well before they approved it. Uh, about two months before they actually approved it. But that's another story. I have only heard of one person whose internship was rejected by CIEE, but because it was, she'd struggled a lot to find an internship. Before that, she finally got this one through the interviews and everything like that. And then they uh, did not approve it. I don't, I can't remember what the reason they gave was. And she actually ended up going home. So I don't know what happened there. I think she has returned since, but uh, that made things very complicated. And she was also not in the business marketing PR entertainment kind of industries or finance she wasn't anything like that either so I think that is another kind of testament as to why anything outside of that can be a little bit more difficult so once CIE approve your internship that you know you want to accept but you have to wait for them to be like yes you can accept it then your new employer has to fill out something called a training plan and it's not that intense but if you are a pleb frankly, which most interns are, no offense, it's kind of difficult to go to your supervisor and be like, hi, can you fill out all of these forms for me and me alone? This is something I found really difficult because my supervisor was a super, super busy person, uh, super busy, had a lot of shit to do, and I had to keep asking him to fill out stuff for me. And then it wasn't filled out correctly for CIEE because some of the stuff was not fill outable because of the organization that I was interning with, which again, is a whole other issue. It's because of tax things and stuff like that. So just like a side note, it has to be an American company. It may not be an organization or an international organization because this is what I was not aware of. Uh, although it was in the US, what I was working for was not technically like the US. It was not under US jurisdiction. So it doesn't have a US tax number. Um, even though it does pay tax, it's a diff very different situation. And this was a problem for the online forms that had to be filled out because it was seeing things as like void and it was, you know, wasn't allowing my boss to submit. And I had to go and end up like staying late and helping him trying to fill it out. Like this person did not have the time for that. And I was the one causing this problem. So I end up calling CIE and they were like, oh, there's nothing we can do about that. You probably just can't take that internship. And I was at that internship for about a month already. Um, they had told me to go ahead and start because it'll probably only take like two weeks max for things to all get sorted out. Yeah, which is 
money because it ended up getting approved in a uh, March. It's pretty difficult to have to go to your supervisor and consistently ask them to do favours for you basically um, and CIE you have to call them. Uh, this is another which will go into my story. Uh, there was a situation where something had been, we had finally had it submitted, um, took a while because it's not like the most basic process, like it's pretty poorly laid out and like as far as like user experience and stuff like that, information studies coming out, but it's quite poorly laid out all the stuff that you have to fill out and it hadn't been fully submitted uh, and the only person who could do that was my boss and I had to ask him, this was like the fourth time I had to go and ask him and obviously it's just like not something you want to have to do is to continuously approach your supervisor and ask them to do things for you but this is just how it works under CIE and uh, there was no way that they were able to push it forward without him specifically clicking a button again um, and you know doing like yes I know this is blank and you know all of this kind of crap but there was kind of an issue uh, after that where my boss went on vacation and CIAE were saying we can't get in contact with your supervisor you have like 48 hours and I was like I emailed them back I was like my supervisor's on vacation I can give you the number of my two other supervisors if you wish um, but the supervisor is on vacation he will be back on this date it was like in three or four days and uh, then I got another email being like you have 24 hours or else we will like I can't remember the word that basically cancel the approval of that internship and um, if we can, if we don't speak to your supervisor in the next 24 hours and then you will have like 30 days to find another internship and I was like, uh, I emailed them again. I'm like, I'm really sorry. My supervisor's on vacation. Here are the numbers of two of my other supervisors because that supervisor is not reachable right now. He is on vacation in another country. Can you please? And then they emailed me again being like, we have not been able to get in contact with your supervisor. Contact us immediately. So I ended up calling someone at CIE and turns out they had been ignoring my emails, which is great. Love that for me. So that was kind of annoying and that was that's an example of the situations there were so many phone conversations I had with their office um, and some of the phone numbers they give you are incorrect so that's also deadly but uh, the whole that whole paperwork side of it when it comes to like I'm fine with doing paperwork for me I hated the whole part of trying to get your person who has so kindly given you on a super difficult visa and internship to fill out forms for you also, it's not, I thought it would be a pretty common thing. I was actually told by my supervisor who has about, I would say six or seven interns a year, uh, that are most of which are in college, some of which are not in college. Uh, so the college ones, I would have thought they would have all these forms to fill out. They don't. He said he had never done anything like that for someone before. So that's good to know that you are the only person who's being difficult in this situation. It's not interns in general, it's just you. So problem number three that I had listed was that it's not for all degree types, which I already mentioned. I think it's fine for marketing, business, PR, finance, that kind of area, entertainment. For the rest of us, the opportunities are just different and they may not be as readily available. So problem number four is that the internships don't meet the requirements set by CIEE. So as I said before, you might not meet the requirements as in you are not in college and you are on a J1. Uh, and then I mentioned the time thing, which is what CIEE requires, that you must be over, I believe it says here, it needs to be 32 hours a week. It can't be in certain industries, uh, can't be certain roles, it must be an internship, it can't be an entry level job because apparently the training is different and they have all these reasons for that but it must be an internship and not other entry level positions. As well as that CIE or use it don't help you find an internship at all which is something that they kind of advertise but they don't help at all. Uh, at least for someone who's in a non business industry. When speaking to someone from Use It before I left, uh, I was under the impression that you try and get an internship before you leave so that it starts pretty soon after you get there. Uh, but they were like, no, nobody does that. Everybody just finds an internship when they get there, which I thought was interesting. Um, but yeah, they definitely won't help you. Uh, maybe if they helped you, let me know in the comments, but uh, they never gave me 
any assistance. And problem five is that you're an independent woman, but maybe that's not always the best way to move to another country. This is just a mistake that I made by myself. Again, this is not to do with the visa. This is to do with me. Uh, I went to the US by myself. I was supposed to go to DC. This again will be in my own story. Uh, I was planning on going to DC and I got an offer in New York and I was like, okay, I'm gonna move to New York then. Uh, but either way, I was moving by myself and it really does depend on what communities you kind of integrate into, but I found it pretty difficult to adjust to living there. I worked with great people. There were other interns. I was lucky with that. There's a UN intern association. I lived with cool people, but still, it was really, really difficult. And um, that is something I would definitely take into account if I were to go again, uh, because I, I wouldn't write off going again. I just would not not do it through use it or anything that is connected to CIEE because of the amount of issues they caused me. I think it's definitely a better idea to go with another person or even a group of people um, rather than go by yourself. You know, it can seem like a great idea and you know you're taking on the big bad world but it's a big bad world out there. You don't necessarily want to do it alone. So that is it for my massive kind of rant. Is it a rant? About what went wrong or what were the difficult parts of going on the one year graduate visa. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. You can always follow me on Instagram at anime.yt. Pretty active over there. And as I said, I'll have the blog post linked down below when I wrote out all of these issues in a more maybe concise way or it's a little bit more long form. There's more information there. I know the grad visa can be wonderful for some people, but it's also not always wonderful for everyone. And I just thought I would be kind of the devil's advocate in this situation and share the negative sides that can happen because I have only really shared the positive parts on YouTube so far. So that said, I'm also gonna leave my UN internship playlist up here as well as just some other related videos that you might be interested in and the link to subscribe. I would love if you subscribed to my channel and I will see you in my next video.